Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you for joining me again today. Today, we're going to start diving into each of the five virtues that are represented by the blue rose petals, the center petals. And um, they are in itself, in each one, I think they deserve their own content. It's too big to just gloss over because they're really important. And they're virtues that are um, concepts that if we embody them in our now moment life right now, they can only help you. Like, like there's really not a downside in my opinion. Um, I am joined today by my soul sister, Aurelia. She does not have permission from source yet to show her face. So, um, say hello, Aurelia. Hi there. Hi everybody. Glad to be here. She's real. I promise. Um, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I accepted this mission a couple years ago to um, start a YouTube channel and share truth. And so I'm the face you're stuck with for now. <laughs> um, Aurelia is beautiful that, you know, that there's nothing like that in play here. It's just a matter of energies and timing. And for her right now, she is to contribute. She is to, um, to deliver what she's led in comments of this content, but not show her face yet. So we'll just go with it. And, um, if you have not, if you're tuning in today and you have not, please go back and watch the first order of the blue rose introduction and then watch them in order because I really think it's super beneficial. Of course, you can jump in and watch wherever you want. We appreciate all views, but I want you to get the whole um, breadth of the content. So definitely don't want to shortchange yourself there. So today is episode three, Sacred Order of the Blue Rose. We're covering the five virtues in a video themselves. And so today's topic is truth. Truth is it's a leading guiding force for me. It always has been. Uh, I've been accused many times in my in my incarnation this time of being brutally honest, which that just means that the, the truth hurts, right? And I have endeavored to tone that sharp edge down some, but I've also learned that no matter how you deliver truth, when people do not expect what you're about to deliver, it can still be painful. And so for that, um, I just have to say, suck it up, buttercup, because you want disclosure, you want the truth. The truth is not always pretty. In fact, sometimes the truth is really heartbreaking, but it doesn't make it untrue because we don't like to hear it. It doesn't make it untrue because it makes us uncomfortable, but the fact of the matter is when we get uncomfortable, we are then creating the friction to grow and expand. And so truth can guide you. Truth can set you free. Truth is an energy that cannot be destroyed. And truth is what I think our foundational um, life should be based on. Was it? Not so much. And we're learning that now. This was the time in this existence for us to wake up to the truth. And so we've all come about it in different ways, different paths, but truth is very important. I've always said from the inception of my channel, you can go back to video number one, that lies cannot be respected, but the truth, although it may hurt, can. And that is where I am today. I have steadfastly remained that in that energy, that truth is the guiding force. The truth is a guiding force for me and also through my channel. And <clears throat> go ahead within the related to truth integrity is right there with it yeah. when you're standing in your truth you're standing with integrity and vice versa from there you're saying every step forward you make whether it's in that moment in that day in that hour you're being true to yourself you're calling mm -hmm. in your integrity and you're standing forth in that to say, here I am, take it or leave it. As you just said, suck it up, buttercup. This is who I am for real. That evolves also to our umbrella term of love. Yeah. And if you've ever, if you've ever had a conversation with someone who 
their normal MO was just to kind of go along with everybody else's um, consensus of things. And they, maybe they get bullied a little bit. Maybe they get kind of pushed around by bigger energies or whatever. And then in this, whatever moment it took them to, to stand in their truth and speak their truth, they usually followed up with, man, that felt good. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. You feel empowered and you feel free when you're telling yeah. the truth. Yeah. It's, and you don't have me- to remember what you said because it's all truth. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I almost feel and see chains falling off of people, you know, because whether you realize it or not, the weight of carrying around anything less than truth, which is also anything less than love, it's heavy. It's heavy. It has a weight to it. Yeah. It's like there are chains. They just weigh you down and weigh you down. Yeah. bricks that you pile on top of yourself yeah 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 so so dipping into really wanting to speak your truth okay that is a level of authenticity that empowers you because you are anchoring your your frequency in the truth that actually frees you from the lies of your past. 100%. Yeah. And, and it, it's a lot of people talk about truth. A lot of people pretend that they speak truth until they get challenged. And then all of a sudden their truth crumbles because it's really wasn't truth. It wasn't really based on anything. Truth uh, again, it's a frequency. It resonates because it delivers energy to the being. That's why when you hear truth, you may have zero knowledge of it before that moment. When your soul hears it, when it resonates in your body, you know it's true. It doesn't have to be pr- represented in a book citation or video or anything like that. You know it to be true. Your soul tells you it is true. And that is all the validation that you need. Yeshua just said, you get an, excuse me, you get an aha moment when you recognize truth. And sometimes it can bring more from you. And other times it just allows you to connect. Or when you say, when you realize someone is not speaking truth, but speaking lies, that's another aha moment. And you work from there. For real. Yeah. (laughs) For real. For real. (laughs) word (laughs) you know it's one thing um when I when I have to go out in the in the world when I have to engage with the people the peoples um (laughs) that it's so obvious in their energy that they're just regurgitating things that they hear that they have really no faith in that they really have no um, invested energy frequency of because it's just it's just outside of themselves, right? It's just thoughts and ideas that have been thrown at them. And they're like, well, I heard this. And did you hear about this? And, you know, it's hearsay. It's all hearsay. And it's a matter of what you attach to. And for me, anything that is less than truth, I don't attach to it. And I can discern that really easy now, now, because I've done the work, right? But if you are someone who's just entrenched in the matrix, you do in the nine to five or whatever the the work schedule that you happen to have, and you're all around everyone else's opinions and their things that they're getting thrown around and, and you're watching the evening news and you have no idea what is true anymore. And it's becoming super frustrating. It's super frustrating because the universe is saying, how long are you going to put up with this insanity? How long are you going to keep engaging in all of the chaos that's literally meant to push you toward truth? How long are you going to be out here floundering? Go within, turn the devices off, unless you're watching Healing Disclosures with Nicole. (laughs) And... Detect, discover, discern the truth within you. That is your biggest guidance. 
because all of the truth comes through the divine and the planet and the connection that we are between them. And so if you're, if you find yourself there and you're just super frustrated with anything anyone is saying, it's because you're listening to the wrong people. The, the messages that should be coming to you that give you a sense of peace and calm and love and motivation and harmony are truthful, resonating words, truthful, resonating feelings, frequencies, and emotions. And your body tells you when you're engaged with that or not. So if you're feeling super frustrated in your life because you feel like everything around you is a lie, it may be, but it's also for you to change. If you want things to change, you have to make changes. And it's an opportunity within turning off, turning off the devices to go to Nate, go outside to nature, connect with nature, sit and look up at those clouds, hug the tree, look at the leaves that are falling or the new buds that are blooming, depending on where you are and slow down. The truth is there, but you've got got to be willing to not have something come always talking at you. Right. Right. The definition of truth, conformity to fact or actuality, reality are the reality of a situation and the body of real things, events and facts. That's what the matrix tells us truth is. I don't really even know if I agree with any of that. How do you yeah. feel? It, are, are I really? do not care for that. Yeah. Nothing in that made me say, oh, yes, that, that resonates. No, everything said, ew, as you yeah. read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first thing that was a tip off is conformity. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Truth can be like a sword cutting through the narrative. And it has been for many, for me, for sure. And I welcomed that because it was the conformity to the narrative that was driving me absolutely insane. The truth is what the beacon to wake up is that sword cutting through the narrative, that, that false light, that contrived energy that we were all waiting around in. And so I discount that. I, I, I think that those definitions of truth are definitely um, there to manipulate us into believing that truth has to conform to what everyone else believes is reality. And that is the opposite of truth. If you ask me. Ascendant master Melchizedek gave us this information on truth. It is of utmost importance with yourself and others. If not truthful, the other virtues don't matter. So there are these five virtues that work together. When we, when we combine the powers of truth, love, harmony, peace, and valor, they are only as powerful as each one brings to the whole. If you are a love master, you want to just send love to everyone and everything is harmonious and you love peace and all the things, but you're a liar. You tell one person one aspect of a version of truth, which I'm here to tell you the truth doesn't have versions. And then you give another version to someone else because you're not sure how they're going to receive your actual truth. Well, you're falling, you're coming up short. You're weakening those virtues. So you have to fully embody each and every one of them to the best of your ability. He goes on to say, truth is respected. As I say all the time, this was in the message, as Lucy says, you may not hear what you like, but that doesn't make it untrue. If you're truthful, people will respect you. And this leads to love. Truthfulness, you can love. And with love, you can have harmony and peace. No fighting. Standing in your truth strongly. It takes courage. And then you are led to valor. It's the five virtues that go hand in hand. You have a response to that, ma'am? <laughs> I'm thinking about the rose and the petals and how each virtue represents a petal. 
or each petal represents a virtue as it goes around the flower and how many layers of those petals they are there are there from the bud and then as it opens and it blooms and you get more and more and more layers right but they're all the same and so I think there's a symbol there with the amount of petals and the layers within it's not one and done it's not simple they do overlap if you think about a rose and think about the petals, it's it's just beautiful. They overlap, and, they intertwine, and it's almost like it's it's never finished as the rose blooms and almost unfurls. Right. It continues, and it's something to continue to strive for. Right. And I think you kind of refine it as you go as well. Truth right. obviously being the first and foremost of these petals and of these layers. Yeah, I think the more that they, that the virtues actually overlap, that strengthens the rose, right? If you, if you pull petals out randomly, that weakens the, the bud, that weakens the flower. Absolutely. And so again, very symbolic of the pieces that work together, where it's not just one aspect, that you can master. It's expected that we make progress, forward progress in each of these virtues, understanding that perfection is not required. Uh, although most of us strive for that, um, it, it's unnecessary. There's nothing that's, that we're going to do that's ever going to be fully 100% perfect. It's the, it's the uh, motivation to progress forward, even when it becomes uncomfortable that we're, that they're looking for. And, you know, with that comment with progress, not perfection, that is so freeing. I was talking to a couple of different moms this past week when they have younger children and there's so much that's always talked about where you've got to do this. You've got to do this. You've got to do this. And I said, what about progress? Not perfection. Yeah. And as soon as you give that phrase, people just relax because yeah. they feel that that's, that's real. That's true. It's not contrived. It's, it's attainable. Yes. Yes. It's like, oh, I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. And then you can build upon it. Yeah. It's like suddenly you bring the bar down to where they can reach it. Yes. You know, meet them where they're at. Yes. And make progress from there. Yes. Yeah. And that there's a whole hierarchy in the system that sets you up for that unobtainable goal the the carrot that's at the end of the stick that constantly gets further and further away you know oh my goodness yes and it's hard to choose to break free from that and to find within your reality to find the truth there and say no this doesn't fit this doesn't fit hey how does that make sense and really unpack that but once yeah. you do you start healing yeah yeah and it's very i'm seeing like when the proverbial rat race, right. And, and I'm seeing like all the people on the, the city streets walking to work before nine and, and after five and the rush hour and all the things. And then you've got those that do not participate in that for whatever reason. And they sit and they look at the, this rush of beings and they're like, where's everybody off to in such a hurry, you know? Yes. And so those that are, that are in the rush are looking at the person not going anywhere to like, like they don't make any sense and vice versa. Yes. The person that has peace and calm and is not participating in that rat race is like, they make no <laughs> sense. <laughs> Your facial expression was perfect right there. <laughs> Again, progress, not perfection, but that was perfect. <laughs> yeah, my face, my face always tells the truth. Okay, this was a message from Maggie. When Yeshua gave me the blue rose, it embodied all of those virtues. Truthfulness between us, the love which brought harmony and peace to our home, the valor to state and stand in our truth, love, peace, and harmony. Sometimes truth, of course, doesn't bring peace and harmony outside of yourself, but always does inside. That's just beautiful. I know. I may have to type that up and frame it. Especially 
after all this time of all the lies and all the negative energy that has been sent to that power couple, yes, she still embodies these five virtues. Why? Because it's truth. It is her truth. And the other low vibrational things do not matter. It does not take away from that truth. I'm laughing because just before we started recording, Yeshua said he was going to send some music. <laughs> <laughs> what did he send? <laughs> well, I can't sing, so I'm just going to leave it at that. But if I just randomly start giggling, that's what it is. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I was so this... thinking. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, as you were talking, just as you were talking about the couple and Maggie and what she had just said that you read. <clears throat> it's just thinking about and felt a peace in their home. They may have all this other stuff going out externally, you know, being threatened, having to move, et cetera. But because of these virtues and because of what they chose to embody, there was a level of peace. And yeah. I could see it, you know, as you think about the cozy, quaint home with the fireplace and the rocking chair and, oh, it's just so peaceful and lovely. I'm not saying that that's what it looked like, but that's the feeling it gave me. Yeah. And then you talked about whatever music from Yeshua. So <laughs> there's no telling what he brought in. It's a rap song. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> truth is a five letter word that embodies so much frequency of truth connects the heart chakra and it's associated with the colors of green and blue truth in oneself and in others and all situations it aligns with integrity which is exactly what aurelia alluded to earlier they go hand in hand balancing and weighing of any decision through the lens of truth is what we are called to do. Truth is not popular. In fact, mm -mm. many run from it. Many are physically uncomfortable when facing truth that upsets the apple cart. <clears throat> Courage plays a role in the embodiment of truth because as you seek truth, you have to be willing to accept that truth will come in a in a way in a form that does make you uncomfortable because it is vastly different than what you've been taught maybe what your your life has been based on i think we've all been there we can all empathize with that truth does not waver it is steadfast the distinction between truth and opinion often gets blurred in the matrix I think about so many times where we receive a message from the divine source, Mother Sophia, any of the divine feminine ascendant masters that we work with, maybe St. Germain, he was really big and giving me a lot of truths that corrected my own opinion of things, things that I thought I knew, things that I thought even based on my intuition were true, but I was wrong. And I remember feeling peace in the truth, even though it was not at all what my brain told me the truth was and recognizing that, that that's how I discerned truth from the rivers of lies that surround us. You know, you, you have a lot, we all have a lot of information around us in any given moment. And so I, I do ask you to try to work on your energy in discerning truth from lies. And you may say, everything I hear seems like a lie to me. And it could be, it could be true. That could be so that you stop receiving information from these portals, from these different entities, whether it be a television program or maybe someone you watch a lot on YouTube, maybe someone who has a program, a podcast somewhere everything that you're hearing now 
just doesn't resonate with you anymore because you're waking up because your frequency is rising and in a higher frequency, you can discern truth from lies because lies feel funky. So tapping into that, that response that your body is giving you is really important when you're learning discernment. When I first started hearing about discernment, it was just a word. I had no idea how to practice discernment. And a lot of folks who were pretending to practice discernment were just being judgmental, um, opinionated, whatever, whatever avenue they were taking, it wasn't discernment. And I, I honed in on my discernment by being a part of these groups, these social spaces that taught me um, vitriol and judgment and shame and blame and guilt and all these things that seem to be surrounding around us like little fires that are going around. And so I do ask you to definitely give yourself that time in nature, give yourself that time alone, device free, and let the energy of truth resonate within your being. You know it when you hear it, you know it when you feel it. It's, it's very empowering. It feels good where anything less than truth, which we equate to anything less than love, doesn't feel good. It has a vibration about it that's kind of icky. I don't know how else to describe it. Aurelia, you may have a better way of relating that. As you're, every time we're thinking about it, I've noticed since my energy healing with you, I become more aware of the dichotomy between the truth and the lies. And yeah. within that, I've, I noticed myself physically recoiling so quickly. It could be something I've read. It could be something somebody has said. It could even just be being near a person and they have not said anything. Whatever the energy is that they are giving off, whatever it is, it doesn't, doesn't fit. Right. It, it might be true but it doesn't work for me. Typically it's because what the person's saying really is not of integrity. They're, it's an opinion. They're trying to sway somebody, that type of thing. And within that too, with the healing, I've noticed I was never a, a TV person. Yes, I enjoy movies. Yes, I enjoy shows, but I wasn't one to just walk into the room and turn it on automatically. Well, I do even less of that now. I don't want to hear random people talking at me. Notice I say at me, not with me, not to me. And I also am very protective of what I allow to come into my into myself, into my circle, my personal self, where, you know, what is this person saying that do I even want to give the energy and allow myself to expend my own energy interacting with that idea? Usually the answer is no. I will search for something for 20 minutes to watch it, go, eh, I'm good and move on <laughs> and put on high frequency music or one of your videos that I haven't watched yet. Um, but as you were talking about truth and being in nature and kind of what to do for yourself, a word came to mind, permission. Give yourself the permission to do this. A lot of times we're so much better to other people than we are to ourselves and we'll encourage others to do good things for themselves, but we stop and say, oh no, I've got to go do X, Y, Z. So if you need to hear it, give yourself the permission to let go. Give yourself the permission to turn off your phone. Give yourself the permission to get a glass of water, cup of coffee, whatever just makes you happy and go outside and listen to the birds. Yeah. You have permission to be good to yourself. Progress that came perfection. through, yeah, that came through uh, the reading I just did uh, yesterday for the uh, November energies and it came through oh. with, with the sage card, um, mm. you know, mm -hmm. to just sit in nature, be re prepared to receive a message. It may just be the message of be here, be still, be present in the moment not worrying about the past, not worrying about the future, just be right now. Be love. And that's a lot. 
That's a lot yeah. to get yourself to choose to do that and to turn yeah. off your brain and not have it going 90 miles an hour. Yeah. I love that. I haven't seen that yet. I'll have to watch that video. Teaser. <laughs> <laughs> For some, um, it comes natural to speak the truth. And for some, it comes very natural to lie and truth is very uncomfortable for them. And we've all known those folks, right? We have, we have engaged with them throughout life. Sometimes they're soul contracted to be a karmic um, being in your life that is sh to show you what lies feel like and what being lied to feels like. Now, initially you can be completely love bombed and get flooded with lies that make you feel really good, but that energy wanes because it's not rooted in truth. And so in time, your body does tell you there, there's something not right here. There's something that doesn't add up. Again, we are given clues. We are given intuition. Everyone has God-given abilities that you had since you took your first breath in this life. It's a matter of whether you recognize them and then make the decisions on what, how you're going to navigate life after you recognize them. Are you going to make things easier for yourself? Or are you going to not do anything different and keep surrounding yourself by people that lie to you for their favorite pastime? I am personally not built to lie. My face tells the truth 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> There's moments where I'd like to maybe spare someone the truth of what I think or feel. <laughs> and when I keep my mouth shut, my face still tells them. If that's, <laughs> if that's your lot in life, you know, I just have to say embrace it because after spending my entire adult life with this affliction and understanding that even if you could only see my eyes, you would still know the truth. Source comes in and says, it's time to start a YouTube channel to spread truth. <laughs> and I thought, okay. okay. You're funny source. Yeah. You do know that me doing this my entire life has really pissed people off. <laughs> you're just honing the talent honing yeah. the skill yeah so things that people had issues with were not what I said but how I said it how I said it okay so you completely missed the message you're focused on how I delivered the message okay your priorities are not in order <laughs> <laughs> but we have learned we have grown in times where we encounter people, places, and things that really do put truth in our face, and we don't like it. Maybe it's something that we kind of felt in our gut and all of a sudden we're faced with the truth of it. Then that's where you have to have a little bit of courage and a whole lot of faith. Because inside, deep inside, you want it truth. Deep inside, you want it to know what was what. And now you have it. And man, it is a gut punch. Plenty of times in this journey, I have been literally punched in the gut and takes days sometimes to get over that, which I sought out anyway, but I heal from it. It's not meant to be something that knocks you back and you just stay chained up in lies forever. It's meant to propel you forward through the lie and understanding that the truth sets you free. Now, People get stuck in that a lot. People get bogged down in that, you know, like I, I thought I wanted to know, and then it started to come my way and oh, they, they put the stop sign up like, nah, I don't really want to know that. And you have free will choice. You can do that. But to stay stuck in that moment, that limbo space of understanding you've been lied to, but being afraid of the truth. That's just it. You're stuck there. Your energy is just going to keep surrounding you and you're going to feel like you're in the vortex of a tornado. You have to make a decision. What is going to be your decision? Do you suck it up and walk through that path that takes you through truth and all that it brings? 
or do you stay in a low vibrational, um, very unhealthy, toxic situation of being surrounded by lies, pervasive lies? Truth does and can set you free. Like we said before, there are seemingly heavy chains that go along with lots of lies that we're taught as children and in young adulthood that we tend to carry around with us until we find our way back to truth and we can shed those chains off of us. Keep standing in your truth. When you figure out what your truth is, that is a huge motivating factor for me. I've worked really, really hard to get to the place where I know truth and I can discern truth and I live truth and I'm not letting anybody take that from me. So stand in it, embody your power, take it back from all the people that think you're too weak or afraid to face the truth of our lives, the truth of your life. Take that step a little bit of courage and a whole lot of faith. You need, you need strength. You need resolve. You need love. You need courage. Ask for it. That's what your spirit team is for. They're just, they're waiting on you to ask for what you need with true intention and the, the, the love of your heart that is connected to truth and the frequency of truth. You're given exactly what you need to navigate this life as difficult as it may be. Do you have anything to add to that, Aurelia? No. Love is the key to opening infinite possibilities. We have seen that illustrated and demonstrated in beautiful ways over the past year. One of them is that love is also an access to truth. When we love ourselves enough to not only seek out truth, but in spite of what the ego may be telling you, free ourselves and embody the virtue of truth, we grow exponentially. And that is another infinite possibility that truth and love lead us to infinite growth, infinite expansion of our soul essence. The truth may shock you. The truth may hurt you, may hurt your feelings. It may be like a dagger in your heart if you find out the truth of someone you love is not what you thought it was. The truth may bring you to cry. The truth may, may make you feel empowered. But the truth is always respected 100% of the time, even if you don't like it. There are people in the world that will say, well, they're not my favorite person, but they're always truthful. And that's okay. That's okay. Respect doesn't mean besties. And how many people have had a bestie that's lying to them their, their whole life? They're not the same. Respect on merit, truth, and love are really, they stand alone, but they work together. And I may not be liked for delivering truth, but if you never hear it, then you never have the opportunity to discern what does that truth mean to you? How does that truth set you free? These are things we work really, really hard to discover and put out to the collective so that you too have the opportunity to discern how does this nugget of information change your life? Will it change your life? Is it supposed to? Those are decisions for you to make. But I have continued to fulfill my mission that source has asked me to do, which is deliver truth, divinely led truth. Messages come through myself, Aurelia, many of our other sisters that provoke us to dot connect truth. And it's usually in a sense, it's usually one thing that we may have had a question about at some point in our life. And then in the moment it became time for us to uncover truth. Like we weren't even thinking about it. It wasn't even in our radar, but the divine says, okay, now it's time for truth. Now the collective is ready for this. And we want you to connect the dots of the truth and deliver it to them. It's then up to you to decide what you're going to do with that. Adding to that, Lucy, is the idea where <clears throat> searching for truth, it allows you to shine a light on what you value. What have you put on a pedestal? 
what do you idolize? And from there, seek, embrace, release, question, and find the ultimate truth. You know, like you said, it may not be comfortable. It probably won't be. But you're unpacking and you're taking off those bricks and those chains as you choose to do so. Right. And for that reason, you then find more truth, which allows you to get to even more truth. It's it's almost like a big snowball when you allow it to happen. Yeah. Well, that's where you hear people say, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Oh gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Once you, once you dip your toe into the pond of truth, there's a lot that comes with that. It's just, it opens the door. And if you're brave, if you're courageous enough to get through the uncomfortableness, the friction there, that friction is usually an exterior source or your ego doesn't want you to really change things. They like it. They like to be comfortable. They don't want to be challenged, but the truth is challenging at times and embodying the truth is absolutely challenging because your truth may be completely different than everyone in your vortex. And that again, takes courage and faith. Now, this is a message that actually was channeled to Aurelia, but <laughs> this was a, a few days ago. So um, this came from Ascendant Master Melchizedek. And this is the messages Leah gave it to me. Lucy, Order of the Blue Rose message is making floods of ripples already. We are very proud of you, but not egoically of your commitment and authenticity. Aurelia wondered why she received that message and not me, but I knew why, because I'm very humbled, but I'm also not in my ego at all. And it's hard for me to receive a message of compliment or an accolade or a pat on the back. Um, my my consciousness would have interrupted that message. I would not, it would not have come through that way for me to receive it directly. We may not like the truth, especially due to the shadow work that usually accompanies revelations. Usually whenever truth bombs land in your yard and explode, there's a fallout. Mm. And sometimes that fallout means that you have to do inventory of people that you have invited into your vortex, beings that you thought were good, beings that maybe initially love bombed you and made you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. But now you get to know them a little bit deeper and it's just not what you thought it was. Well, you have to be the man or woman to decide that this no longer serves you and make those changes where you choose yourself over someone else's feelings because they don't want to give you up they don't want to give up their energy source they're probably an energy vampire and they don't want to give you up they're going to push back on that they're going to double down on the love bombs but you've already seen truth you've already felt it within your being again having the courage to walk those steps along the path of discernment and making the appropriate reactions to what other people are bringing to your door that's all we're we're led to do. We don't control anyone outside of ourselves. We only control ourselves to the extent that we can make our free will choices based on whatever energy is being delivered to us. I, for one, would rather receive painful truth and deal with the fallout of it than be in a painful life of never ending lies. And that is where we find a lot of people today. Do you have any closing statements, Aurelia? Watch this video more than once. <laughs> As you often say, take what resonates. It's okay if it made you feel a little uncomfortable. You know, hope that there are some smiles and laughs along the way. Ultimately, though, connect within, enjoy nature, and if you feel led, seek truth, period. It's going to open so much more 
that you never imagined. Yeah. Yeah. And I always invite you to violetlotusenergy.com schedule your QET session so you can clear out all the negative distortions in your energy body. It's just a part of growing up here. You haven't really done anything wrong. Most of us don't. We're just thrown, things are thrown at us. Once you're clear, you can get clear messages. You can get clear guidance. It's a lot less murky and a lot less ambiguous. And so be your best friend, be your most compassionate healer and sign up for QET sessions so that you can start to communicate with your divine guidance, your spirit team, and discern truth a lot easier with more precision from the heart. Thank you for joining us today, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.